Hi, I'm Matt from Motorsport Electronics and in this video we're going to be covering the install of our wiring ME221 ECU onto a Ford ZTEC engine. We're going to add a bit of flavour to this one. We're also going to be throwing on a set of throttle bodies. These have been supplied to us from Dynasty Engineering and they should make this thing sing. This is our ME221 wiring ECU. It's designed for four-cylinder, fully sequential engines, um, and it runs the same great firmware and software as our MX-5 range. So it, you know, most people are used to it, a lot of tuners are used to being able to tune this system. And what we've done is we've worked hard on creating a range of looms uh, for different engines. So this is a Ford ZTEC engine. It's a blacktop, very common engine, used a lot in kit cars and classic conversions and so on. As you can see, it's a fully shielded loom. Uh, we have here, obviously, the plug for the ECU itself. And coming from here, we have our powers and grounds. Now, these, obviously, red for our switched ignition 12 volts. Black should go to a good earth eyelet on the chassis. These flying leads, and these are the spare outputs, things like not control, spare uh, low side drivers and so on. Map sensor connection. This is wired for the standard three bar GM type map sensor. And on this particular setup, we're not going to use a map sensor because we're going to be running throttle bodies coolant temperature sensor uh, as denoted by the yellow trace. This is a standard mini timer connection. We're going to actually be changing this plug to suit the Ford engine on this on, on, on here because the blacktop uses a cylinder head temperature sensor so we're going to be changing that in this video. IAT, the inlet air temperature sensor as denoted by the orange trace. We have these unterminated wires. Now these are for the throttle position sensor. The reason being on the bike version of the loom for the bike throttle bodies, the TPSs will vary. So we just leave these wires as, as free hanging and you can connect those up to the TPS and we'll also show you how to do that. Next we have the camshaft position sensor, this thick red trace with a mini timer connector. It's a standard mini timer connector for the blacktop. On the ST170 version of the loom, it's the Denso type connector. Crankshaft position sensor, again, mini timer connection, two pin standard VR type sensor connector and a shielded cable for that one. Ford coil pack connector, uh, standard connections for the Ford coil pack, should just plug in and go. This is an LS driver, so this can be used to control the VVT solenoid on the ST170 or you can use it for the idle control if you're running the standard inlet and so on. And finally, we have the injector harness. And as you can see, these plugs are actually set up for the bike type Denso injectors. Uh, with, the, with the funny oval plug. The normal loom for the ZTEC would run the mini timer type connectors to suit the standard injectors. So for this install, we're going to be using these GSXR 750 throttle bodies. They've been supplied to us by Danisty Engineering. They come with the trumpets, uh, the, the, the rubber joiners, the manifold plate itself designed for the ZTEC, <coughs> the adaptive fuel rail and the injectors, as well as the TPS sensor. So what we're going to do is carry out the mechanical installation of these onto the engine. After we've done that, we're going to wire up our TPS sensor and going from there, hopefully get this engine running. So this is the cylinder head temperature sensor that the Ford Blacktop uses to measure its coolant temperature. The plug is different than the standard mini timer connection we provide on our looms. So we're going to retrofit this so it fits onto our connections. Uh, what we have got, because we have the standard inlet and the standard wiring sub loom, we're going to cut that plug off, wire it onto our ME221 loom so we can make this removable. Some Ford ZTEX do have a coolant temperature sensor in the thermostat housing on the end of the engine. And also if you're using a water rail setup, then you'll be able to fit a standard coolant sensor into there. Our loom, as I say, is a two-pin mini timer connector, so if you're using the circular forward connection, you should take the plug from the donor engine and wire that into our loom. Or if you're using the water rail, just be sure to use a sensor with a two-pin mini timer connector. It's worth noting on the 
bike throttle bodies that they have a returnless rail. That is, they just have an input of fuel. So what you will need is a fuel pressure regulator before the rail to return anything over the fuel pressure, typically three to four bar back to the tank. So what we're gonna do is just connect up our dyno feed here. And we have a regulator in our dyno feed system. So all of that is taken care of for us. Okay, so now we're going to plug in our injectors. And remember, this is the bike type loom, the bike injection loom, which has the Denso type plugs as standard, followed by the cam sensor, which sits in here. Can be a little tricky with the TPS in the way, but it does go on. Next, we're gonna plug in our coil pack. I'm gonna take our coil pack connector, loop under the pack and plug it in here. Like so. Here we have our standard Bosch GM type IAT sensor. It's gonna plug into the trace, again with the orange trace in the wiring loom. We're gonna plug that into here. And it's important that this goes somewhere near the intake stream. What most people will do is drill their air filter if they have a filter back plate and put that in through the back of the back plate inside the filter. We're going to cable tie this up here so that it can read the ambient temperature of the air entering the engine. So here we have the cylinder head temperature sensor on this engine which we're going to use for engine coolant temperature and what we need to do is take the coolant temperature plug which has the yellow trace and on our standard looms it has a mini timer connector because as I said before some people would use a GM type coolant sensor in their coolant system obviously we're going to use this one so what we need to do is either cut this off and change the plug to a female mini timer or what we can do because we have the OEM connector here we're going to cut this plug off and link these two together such that the coolant temperature sensor will read properly. Now ideally we would solder and heat shrink these but because we're in a safe environment here on the engine dyno we can get away with just twisting and taping but on, in automotive use we would either solder or crimp these together. It doesn't matter which way around they go because it is a thermistor so you can put these either way around it doesn't matter it will work. It's then a case of just plugging this together. There we go and the ECU now has a coolant temperature reference coming into it. So as we covered before there are some extra connectors on this loom this one here is a manifold pressure sensor, so you could use this for measuring boost and so on if you're running a turbocharged engine. But because we're using throttle bodies, we don't need to connect this. The other one is this two pin mini timer on this quite long cable. This is connected to low side driver three within the ECU. And you would use this typically to run a VVT solenoid on the ST170 engine, so it can control the VVT properly. Or you can use it to do things such as a boost control valve or a fuel pump output. You know, the options are there for this one. So uh, we're going to leave this one hanging along with the map. This leaves just the crank position sensor to connect, which is on the other side of the engine, as well as wiring up the throttle position sensor, again, to the standard connector on the throttle bodies. Now, the, the ZTEC engine looms do come with the option of the standard Ford connector for the Ford inlet throttle body. Uh, but this is the, again, the ITB bike loom so it doesn't have any wires connected on it doesn't have a plug connected on here ready for you to wire up to the varying array of different TPSs you get on the bike throttle bodies. All throttle body TPS position indicator sensors all share the same thing in common they have three wires and generally speaking the center wire is always the signal. So as we said the first one to do is signal which is the middle pin on the TPS sensor and that needs to go to the pink wire in our loom and a spot of tape. And again, we are going to guess here that black is the ground, so we're going to link the blacks to the blacks. Now, if you have two blacks in your loom, be sure to link them together. Some looms in production only have one black. It's nothing to worry about, but again, it just needs to be linked together. And lastly, we have our 5 volt reference, our 5 volt supply to the sensor. And we're going to just have a guess here that this is on the blue wire. Lastly, it's a case of taking our crank position cable, which is in a shielded thick black wire, and connecting this to our crank sensor down here on the back of the flywheel. It's then just a case of taking our ECU and plugging in our main connection harness. Like so. And we then need to provide a switched ignition 12 volts with a 10 amp fuse to the reds and a ground outlet connection to here. We're going to use our dyno's power supply to do that. So we've got everything connected to our engine now electronically. We also have the ignition on, so our ECU is powered. And we've taken our comms lead 
from the ECU running through a genuine FTDI USB serial adapter. We've plugged it into our laptop and we've previously downloaded the Mighty Tuning Studio. We've also downloaded a calibration from our website, the Blacktop GSXR 750 calibration. So we're going to go and run Mighty. And remember the ignition to the ECU is on. And as you can see, we get a connection status. It's connected up to the ECU. What we're now going to do is load in the calibration. So we start because all ECUs will arrive blank. So it's very important that we load in the correct calibration. So calibration, load calibration file. It's on the desktop already. The ZTEC GSXR map. We're going to go to load all data at the top here and we're going to press load calibration. As if you'd like to send it to the ECU, we're going to press yes, and it's going to send it down. So the calibration has now been sent to the ECU. It's now time to do a sanity check and make sure that all of our sensors are reading as they should. So we're going to go up to sensor calibrations. So first of all, we can see that manifold pressure is at 100. Remember, there's no sensor connected. So it's important that the manifold pressure HRT makes everything equal 100, which with this base map it does. We can see the coolant temperature is 5 degrees and the intake air temperature is 7 or 8 degrees. So that's, that's close enough. That's pretty good. You can also see here how the, CH, the CLT HRT is calibrated for the Ford cylinder head temperature sensor. If you're using a Bosch sensor, you would have to load in a different calibration curve for that sensor. The intake air temperature sensor is already calibrated for the standard Bosch type sensor that we're running, so that's done as well. We can see here that there's a slight error of the throttle sensor. The throttle is closed at the moment, so it should be reading zero in TPS percent. And also, if we mechanically sweep the throttle open and closed, we will see the TPS HRT move up and down. So we also have it wired around the correct way. That's the throttle closed. That is the throttle wide open. So what we're going to do is leave the throttle closed. We're going to have a look at our TPS raw reading, which at the moment you can see is 18,600 approximately. And in the first box of the TPS HRT at 0%, we're going to change that to the 16,000. Sorry, I forgot the number. We're going to, we're going to change that to, sorry, 18,600. There we go. And the TPS is now reading 0. We're now going to sweep the throttle wide open and take a note of that number, of the TPS raw number at wide open throttle, so we can see what the TPS raw value is at wide open. Okay, so wide open, we can see that it's basically 60,600-ish again. So we let that off. Come back over here to the laptop and change that wide open number to 60,500. It's pretty close already. There we go. So we've now saved our TPS calibration defaults. They are now saved. And it's a good idea at this point to save the calibration file. So we now have all of our sensors calibrated. All of the input outputs are also previously set up for this loom. But you can confirm those as well. That the injectors are on the right channels, the fuel pump and so on are on the right pins that you've chosen. But as I say, the standard loom takes care of all of that anyway. The last thing we need to check after calibrating all of our sensors is the injector size. So if we go to the start page here, you can see under injection driver, which is also under system if it disappears, is the injector size. And the brown Denso type injectors that are on the GSSR 750 bodies are 250cc a minute. So we just ensure that 250cc a minute is typed into that box, which indeed it is. We're now ready to turn the ignition off, back on again, so the ECU resets all of our new calibrations and, and sensor settings, and we're then ready to actually start and run the engine. Before we start the engine, there is one thing to do, and that is just to check that we're actually going to have some airflow into the engine, which it's never going to run. On the throttle body setup here, you've basically got some flaps, which, is, which, is, which are your throttles. You have a screw in the middle, which affects the balance between the two sets, so making sure that they're opening evenly or opening at the same rate, because if the screw is offset, then one could be closed and one could be open, so these guys won't be running at all, 
and these guys will be running which is just bad news and also at this end you have an idle screw so what I was advised doing is to jack the idle open with the idle screw because there's no idle control on throttle bodies just screw this screw in really jack the throttle open a bit so you have a nice gap around each set and you know check if they're even if possible by sight alone you would usually use a synchrometer to balance these properly between the two but like I say jacking this open gives you a good starting point it, it should let the engine run splutter come to life um, again you, know, you could do it with the throttle pedal uh, but it's easier to do it like that I find we've jacked this throttle open on this throttle stop screw which will make things a bit easier we might need to give it a little bit of throttle as well to help it because it's cold uh, but otherwise let's see how we get on on the base map so if we can turn on the fuel and then we're going to crank the engine over. Hopefully you found this video informative. Uh, remember to check the Motorsport Electronics website where you can find out more information about our ME221 ECU, uh, Dan ST who can supply you the throttle bodies, and also our Facebook page and ME Users Facebook group. And of course, remember to like and subscribe and leave any comments below. Thanks.